Welcome everybody to Love of the Game. I'm Adam Fothery, I'm here with Hunter Shelton, and today we're going to be talking about the AFC Power Rankings, and I'm really excited to hop right into that. Before we do that though, go down below, description, follow our socials, all of them, make sure you follow all of them, and keep up to date with all our episodes, then we can get right into the Power Rankings. First off, Hunter's going to talk about the AFC West and the AFC North and his rankings. Hunter? Alright, so AFC West... Obviously, there's not a whole lot to talk about with number one. We got the Chiefs there, defending Super Bowl champs. Nobody's challenging them as of right now. There's no one, honestly, there's no one in the division that can keep up, so there's not a whole lot to talk about there. The big question here is the second and third teams. I got the Broncos at number two with a great quarterback in Drew Locke based on his last five games last year. If he can continue that play, they've only gotten better on the offensive side of the ball with the addition of Melvin Gordon and Graham Glasgow. On the defensive side of the ball, they've gotten even better with A.J. Boyer and Drill Casey on the defensive line. They're getting Bradley Chubb back. I just don't see the Chargers at my number three spot being able to keep up. The Chargers have a great defense, but I just don't think that offense can keep up unless they truly get a great quarterback, which I don't think is going to happen at the number six pick, and I don't think there's a quarterback in free agency that can truly lead that team ahead of the Broncos. Even someone like Cam Newton, he's got to prove that he can truly do that, and I just don't know if he can. So right now, we got the Broncos at two, Chargers at three, Raiders. They're they're Raiders. They're not going to do well. They don't have the team to do it. They're moving to Las Vegas. I think they're going to disappoint Las Vegas. I just They do not have the team that can keep up with the rest of the division because the division is looking up other than them. Okay, so for the AFC North, who do you think is still going to be the king of that division? Well, you just said it. Who's still going to be the king is the Baltimore Ravens. They are great. They have a great offense. Obviously, Lamar Jackson is only going to get better. They didn't really lose a whole lot. I think they're still going to go 12-4-ish. and four-ish. And then right after that, you got the Steelers, who went, I think they went 7 or 8-8 and eight last year without Ben Roethlisberger. They're going to get him back. I expect them to be in that 10-6 and six range of being able to challenge the Ravens, but not quite be at their level, I expect them to get a wild card spot. After that, we got the Browns. I think they have a lot of promising players. They just don't have a team that can put themselves together. I don't know if this new coach is going to be able to fix that, but right now, they just are not in sync and they can't go score points and keep another team from scoring points to win football games. They just can't do it. They cannot put it together for an entire season. And then at the bottom, we got the Bengals. Number one overall pick this year. I don't expect them to change a whole lot as of next year, even with Joe Burrow. They still have a lot of rebuilding to do. So you talked about the Cleveland Browns for a second. I want to ask, if somehow the new head coach is able to get this team to play together and have a common goal and work forward, are they AFC powerhouse if they can do that? I don't think they get a playoff spot. I think they have a great roster. On the offensive side of the ball, their defense isn't terrible, but, I mean, look at the other two teams in their division. You're going to have to do a lot just to beat them, and then you have teams like the Chiefs in the division, you have teams like the Broncos, Chargers in the division, who are going to be good. You have the other two divisions with the Titans, you got the Colts only getting better, you got the Bills getting better, the Patriots are still there, Dolphins just got a great defense. I mean, again, you're going to talk about those things more in depth, but... I just don't see the Browns being better than those teams, even if they are able to get in sync this year. And I don't think Baker Mayfield can lead them to it. It's going to be really interesting to see. Year three is a really important development for Baker Mayfield and a lot of that Cleveland Browns team. So, like you said, though, I am going to go ahead and talk about the AFC East and my power rankings. At the number one spot, I'm going to put the Buffalo Bills. Look, let's be honest, New England won the division last year. They have lost so many key players it's really ridiculous to put them above the Bills when both of the games they played against the Bills last year, they only won by one score. Like, it was only one score away from the Bills tying that game up. Bills have only gotten better, and I see the Patriots have lost a lot of talent, so I'm going to put the Bills at number one. Number two, I still do say it's the Patriots because I don't think the Jets or the Dolphins have addressed their quarterback positions yet. Um, I still think Bill Belichick is one of the greatest coaches of all time, and he's going to find a way for that team to win. They've signed a lot of veteran defensive players also, so I don't think that indicates that they're trying to tank this season. I don't think that's in the cards for them. At the number three spot, I do have the Miami Dolphins over the Jets 
because the Dolphins, with the addition of Byron Jones, um, really have stepped up that secondary. They also got Kyle Van Noy, one of my favorite linebackers in the entire NFL. I think that's really going to help their run defense and their pass defense along to go along with Xavier Howard. It's going to be really cool to see what they can do. Lastly, I put the Jets because I don't think Sam Darnold's that good. They lost their arguably their best offensive player in a below average offense at best with Roby Anderson. I don't know. There's lots of talent at wide receiver, but I don't think they have it figured out. They need corner. They need defensive line depth. I just feel like this team is just falling apart in so many areas. It'd be really surprising if Adam Gase was somehow able to do anything more than six wins this season. Yeah, I think that honestly, Trevor Lawrence is in the cards for the Jets next year. <laughs> I think I think it's possible. The only thing they have on offense is really Le'Veon Bell, and he is not the Le'Veon Bell that we used to know. So again, like you said, they have nothing going on. I agree on the rest of it. I think the Dolphins are creating a team that can win in a couple years, though. I mean, they have a defense that is stacked. If they can go get Tua and keep him healthy and really revamp that offense, I think they can do well in the future. Right, and that's the thing is they haven't necessarily addressed the quarterback position yet. I think it's very evident they plan to with three first-round draft picks. But the next division I'm really excited for because I think it's the one that's actually going to be probably the tightest in the NFL. And I think that is the AFC South. Now, let's just start from the bottom this time. And number four is Jacksonville. They are obviously tanking. They've traded away Calais Campbell. they traded away A.J. Boye. They have franchise tag Yannick Ngweki, but he's publicly said he will not play for them, so they're probably looking to trade him. They let Nick Foles leave after paying him on a massive contract. I think they're just looking to rebuild and maybe try and recapture some of that magic. Now, my number three team is going to be the Houston Texans. You lost DeAndre Hopkins, one of the best receivers in the NFL. You were able to replace him with Brandon Cooks, but you're paying Brandon Cooks more doesn't necessarily make sense. Now, that offense still has potential to be good, but they haven't really necessarily addressed the offensive line or the corners at all as they were 26th in pass defense last year. I don't see how they're getting better on the defensive side of the ball. J.J. Watt's only getting older. He's I hate to say it, but he's getting injury prone because he has had so many injuries over the course of his career. I think Bill O'Brien's kind of on a, his, like, quote-unquote, Hail Mary season. He's just trying to see if he can string together something at the last second to save his job. Now, second, in a very, very close second, is Indianapolis Colts. This team beat the Houston Texans last year, and they beat Tennessee one game. They have upgraded the quarterback position. They've upgraded cornerback position. They have acquired a lot of other talent. I think it's going to be really interesting to see where this team goes and how competitive they can be. Jacoby Brissett was able to beat the Chiefs last year, so if they can kind of take some of that and you know keep building on top of it, it's going to be really fun to see if the Colts can overtake my number one team, which is the Tennessee Titans. Tennessee Titans were one game away from the Super Bowl. Okay, Derrick Henry, obviously a beast, just cannot be shut down. Even in his game against the Chiefs, he had 20 rushes for 82 yards and a touchdown. And a lot of people said that he got shut down. If 82 yards and a shutdown and a touchdown is getting shut down, I think that's pretty good for running back. Ryan Tannehill looked like he was trying to kind of really start to find his rhythm late in the postseason. Um, I know he didn't play very well against Kansas City, but that team wound up going on to win the Super Bowl. Um... They have some young wide receiver talent. I think it's going to be really fun to see where this team goes and if they're going to stay at that competitive level or if they're going to fall to the rest of the division. It's it's their division to lose right now. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I do have some doubts with Derrick Henry because of the fact that he had 300 touches last year. I think that it's he just got hurt last year for a game and a half, I think. If he gets hurt, the team is second or third in the division, honestly if he d- cannot play the whole season. Now, obviously the Colts are going to be close. I pretty much agree with everything you said. I mean, that division's pretty cut and clear other than number one and number two. It's going to depend a lot on who's healthy. Well, that's the thing is there's, you know, it's 
it's going to be kind of hard. It could be whoever's going to stay healthy, like you said, is going to win it because, you know, really I feel like the talent is all so even and they're all very competitive. And I, honestly, I could see something crazy where, you know, one team wins the division and the other two might make the wild card spot. It would be kind of crazy, but it wouldn't be out of this world because I could see Houston Texans, Indianapolis Colts, and Tennessee Titans beating other teams in other divisions around the AFC and the NFL as a whole. So thank you everybody for watching today. We cannot tell you how much we appreciate all the support, all the likes, all the comments. Um, if you're on Twitter, Facebook, anything, please be sure to leave a comment down below. We want to start doing a comment of the week where we take one of your comments and we talk about it here on the show. So thank you guys so much. Hunter, you want to say anything? Uh, just make sure you're down below in the description, following all our socials, making sure you're keeping up with us.